Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Gui Feng. Uh, today I will uh, will talk about the uh, straw ops. Um, in last few months, we have a lot of new features have been developed for uh, straw ops. Most of them are driven by Skeptex. So uh, here today, uh, I will talk about uh, these new features. Right now, we have uh, some uh, related uh, projects uh, using straw ops. Uh, Skepdex is, of course, uh, our very active uh, project right now. And other projects include uh, Fuse BPF and uh, BPF QDEX. Uh, in case uh, people uh, didn't know uh, startups, so I give you a short uh, introduction about startups. Uh, imagine you have a module or subsystem, you can define an uh, interface. So with this interface, other people can implement this interface, provide an object, so you can call uh, the operators uh, defined by the, in this uh, interface from your module or from your subsystem. For example, here you have a, a, a type called uh, dummy ops that include, that defined to operator add and the sub so then in your subsystem or your module, you uh, provide a reduced function. So with this reduced function, you will receive the object uh, defined by user space, uh, BPF program and load into kernel. So you receive this object like here, then you cast to, to your own type, then you just call, you check if that operator have been defined or provide, and then you just call this uh, function point, just normal function point. Uh, this old stuff will be uh, translated by, by the BPF uh, into a uh, provider uh, trampoline, and you just call that trampoline functions. So previous in this slides you see we receive uh, an object and uh, use the object directly, but uh, in real case, you will more likely you have a user space program uh, define or declare a straw ops map and uh, implement the callback or operator, and then load into kernel, and then kernel will register or unregister this object. And uh, in the subsystem or in the module, you will um, maybe have a table to recall these uh, objects so later you can use, for example, for schedules, maybe you register a new algorithm, uh, schedule algorithm, then schedules will call this, uh, use this object uh, to schedule your, your process or tasks. So uh, we got a lot of new feature in the last few months. Uh, majorly driven by uh, Skepdex uh, because uh, it's uh, heavily been used and developed. So they found a lot uh, missing feature from Skepdex. So majorly, I will uh, show you about these topics. First one is uh, show the variable, no arguments, not a number of programs like this. Okay. First thing is about the should, should all variables. In that case is uh, previous, when you define a straw ops map, uh, you may have some value or function point or operator defined in that map, but you cannot change uh, through the scape decks. For example, you have a, here you have a type, uh, have a flag here, and uh, you, you may define define a value uh, in your program, PPF program. But the later, when you try to load this program into, uh, this map into the kernel, maybe you wanted to change on the fly uh, a coding environment or user parameter. But uh, it, it would be difficult if previous uh, go through the uh, skeleton uh, because we don't support that. But, uh, uh, with the new feature, uh, we map that into a spatial, I call it a shadow type, and then we have a type to that so we can change uh, the value through that pointer. 
So what uh, subsystem or kernel, kernel module should do? Basically, uh, this one is not specially for this should available, but uh, for for any subsystem or any uh, kernel wanted to uh, piggyback some data through the uh, star ops map, you need to do these things. For example, here we have a, a data uh, field called flex. Then in the kernel, you need to do a space to define a special uh, callback here for stops. Uh, for example, here is a function called dummy of init member. This one is called when you update the value of a map. So it will check uh, here you need uh, to, the verifier will ask this, not the verifier, the stops will call this uh, call back uh, to check if that uh, value can be handled by you. If you can handle that, then it will return one, or return zero, then that will fall back the default behavior. So for data field, we need to do special. For example, uh, here we have a, a dummy ops flex, and uh, the, here is a special number you need to multiply by eight because uh, in BPF, we, uh, the offset uh, we is multiplied by eight bits. So it's a count by eight bits, so we need to multiply it. So we just check the offset, and uh, if that offset where the data is, then we just return one and copy the data uh, by our own, own. Okay, that's for the data. Uh, for the user space, uh, it's very straightforward. For example, here we uh, define a star ops map, and uh, we have a value here, and also have a callback here. Uh, no, not callback, uh, operator here. So uh, maybe we have a two different implementations of operator, the first one and the second one. Then in the loader or your user space program, you just need to open, but you cannot open the loader at the same time if you want to change the value. Here you can change uh, the value of a flex, also can change uh, the operator. So you just need uh, to assign the operator to another BPF program. Then you do load. Once you call the uh, load function, then the value will be uh, prepared and the later will be uploaded to the kernel. So you need to change the value before uh, load. Uh, load the function, call load the function, but uh, it still can read uh, after word. You just cannot change after word. Okay, that's about uh, the shadow. Oh yeah, shadow variables. Oh here, I just needed to mention it. Here, you just need to uh, go. Let's provide a special. Uh, field in, in, in the skeleton. So the name here is actually the name in the, the map name in your BPF program. So you just need to follow this point to, to this special field, the shadow variables. Okay, previously we, uh, every point of uh, argument passed to the operator of uh, straps are trusted. So basically you cannot pass a null point into uh, the operator implementing BPF. So there's an uh, enhancement here is uh, to allow uh, you to annotate uh, a operator on the some arguments, so you let the verifier know that there's a, to treat these arguments specially and make that knowable. Without this, if you pass a new point into the kernel, uh, into the operator, because a uh, verifier didn't aware that, maybe it will cause some crash in the kernel. Okay, if you wanted to pass an a null point into argument, you need to annotate the lab and uh, verify or enforce the BPF program to check before you access 
uh, this variable, the buffer point by the, the argument. The subsystem, the kernel or kernel module or your subsystem need to, to do is uh, to annotate your, your function, uh, your uh, operator. Here is a, for example, we have a type defined in your subsystem called uh, test mode ops. This example is straight from the test mode uh, taxi, uh, PPF test mode taxi in our uh, self-test directory. Okay, and then we have a operator called test maybe in one and uh, have uh, two arguments. The second argument is a uh, text structure. This one is supposed to be knowable because sometimes we want to pass a normal task because maybe there's no previous task or something like that. So what you need to do in the kernel is uh, to annotate uh, this argument in uh, CFI stop. So what CFI stop is uh, also a new thing in 2002 into stops, but anyway, you just need um, to define the CFI stops here. Then in here, one is, uh, for example, our uh, test maybe in this operator. We need uh, to define a stop function for, for it. And uh, then in that stop function, it's actually just empty and uh, we need a special annotation here in argument name. Uh, called, for example, task underlie, underlie, and uh, knowable. That made this uh, make the verifier know uh, this uh, knowable argument. In PPF, PPF programs, in your programs, uh, you needed to do is uh, to check the point if it's null. Uh, you needed to make sure this task. Uh, this point is not known before to access the content. That's all enforced by the verifier. If you fail to, a program fail to do that, uh, the verifier will reject the program. Any questions so far? No, okay. Previously, uh, we have a restriction on uh, straw ops we have uh, a limitation on the size of a trampoline. The size of trampoline means uh, every operator in a straw ops need feed into one memory page. So that's about less than 20 operators you can have in the BPF, uh, in a straw ops uh, map. But uh, because of course, this depends on how many arguments, uh, what kind of, uh, how you define the, the, the operator. But uh, overall, it's difficult to over 20 uh, operators. Right now, we uh, extend that to support a multiple page. Right now, we set up a limit, uh, limitation is uh, for eight pages. So you have all trampoline can assume field in eight pages so far. I think this is enough for most cases. If uh, in the future, if any application or need uh, more pages, maybe we can consi consider to uh, increase the number of pages. The other improvement, I think I have uh, mentioned this uh, last year in Plumber. Uh, about the uh, ops define the uh, ops type from uh, modules. Previously, we can only define in a uh, subsystem. That means you cannot use uh, ops or objects, StraOps objects uh, in your kernel module. You can only uh, make your, kernel, your module or subsystem a part of kernel. But right now, because uh, there's some projects uh, wanted to be a kernel module instead of a subsystem, so uh, we improved this uh, to provide a way for a kernel module to define their own structure type. So you can uh, provide, define your own interface, allow the program or um, user service program to extend your, your kernel or subsystem. 
Here, uh, BPF test mode does is a good example. We, you can just check this uh, file to see how, how that work. But it's quite simple. It's just like before, we just needed to define, uh, how to say, to, to define a variable of type uh, BPF star ops to fill this callback. And uh, in the kernel init function, you just need to call this. It's actually a macro, so you just use this macro to to uh, register your new type to star ops. So once user space have a load a map in this type, then uh, star ops know where to uh, to call a callback. For example, here we provide a a register function here, so it. Once we uh, start off, uh, start off map in this type have been load, then it will call this callback function. So you, your subsystem, your kernel, know there's a new uh, instance of your interface. Then you, so you can use that data. You also reduce with the unreduced uh, callback. The other thing, uh, in, in the other improvement is about the compatibility. Uh, we all know most API will evolve over the time. Uh, we will add new argument, new data field, or something that, or add a new API, new functions. That's very common. So that's also happened to the straw ops types. When your module define a type, you, that type may be, will evolve over time to add a new feature or new uh, data parameter into, into your, your type. So that causes uh, compatibility issues. For example, you wanted to look, you have a program uh, that implemented for the old API, old API, but you wanted to run this program with the new kernel, that kind of issue. So, uh, recently, we have some uh, new feature to help you to uh, to uh, provide a solution. It's not a full solution, but at least can uh, fix some issues, uh, provide some flexibility for you. First one is uh, extra arguments. This one is actually not a new feature, but recently we we uh, find, figure out we can do this, and uh, so we added some test case into our self-test to make sure that this uh, feature will available all the time. So, for example, you have a operator, and uh, you you add a new argument to operator. That very common. For example, you add a flag for to modify the the behavior of operator. Now. If you wanted to run the old implementation with, with the kernel, that would be fine. With the new kernel, because our verifier actually didn't check uh, the signature of the function point of operator or your program, but uh, it's actually checked the behavior. That means it will check the instruction in your program. So once, any time, if your program has uh, the context or say the arguments in current number of set or in the current way, then the verifier will accept that. So it doesn't matter what the signature looks like. For example, here we have a, a type called uh, player. Then it's a, have an operator called play. Mm, it's in the first version, we have uh, only one argument called track. It's a track number, and then later we figure out we maybe needed to uh, also uh, control the volume, so we pass a volume along with play, so we can, when we play a track, we can set the volume at the same time. So this uh, extension uh, for the API. Okay. I maybe missed something. Yeah. So 
for, for this case, uh, you, you can, uh, if you have a program implement with uh, the VR, in, VR interface, then you can uh, call, uh, I think I'm, sorry, I, the order of the slides may be wrong. Yeah, okay, this is one. Yeah, this should be this one. Okay, for the V1, you, you, maybe you have a program uh, implement for V1, then it's only have a uh, assign or, or define the operator for play, should be play, sorry. Then, okay, this uh, typo is uh, should be play, not a player. And uh, for the V2, the other program is uh, implement for V2, then it should play and uh, have a stop. I think I mix. Sorry. <laughs> Let me skip this. Okay. Basically, you have a V1 and a V2. Then you have a uh, program implement for V1. Why if, if you uh, run this program with a kernel that implement V2, that will happen nothing because uh, it looks just like a violin is not a pass to, so that's where uh, a default value like uh, zero. So you never read that. So when when uh, when the kernel pass, kernel, of course for the V2 kernel will pass both track and the violin into your operator, but uh, your your implementation never read this argument, so nothing will happen. Just like it's missing. But what happens if you have a V2 program have loaded with V1? Then the, that will, will, will be a, a, a problem because uh, the kernel only pass uh, one argument to you. So there's no argument, second argument. So this one will be rejected by the kernel. So basically you, with this you can uh, use the old program and run on new, new kernel. The other case is if you, you have a new operator being added into your type. Uh, it's also very common, new operator or new data field. For DPPF, actually, if you have, uh, for example, kernel have a more argument, uh, more field, more data or operator than uh, what you implement in the in your BPF program. Then actually, the BPF just reset the value of the, of this extra uh, field. So when you lo load this uh, program into the kernel, this additional field just have a little value. But what if you uh, user space have additional field? For this case. As long as you uh, set these fields into uh, a little values, uh, libpf will ignore them as well. So that would be uh, an easier way if you use uh, implement a new new interface. But you still want to run the same program in with the old kernel. You need to do some feature detection and uh, figure out this uh, a kernel for v1. Then you reset an additional field. Too little. Okay, here is uh, two example. Uh, one is an implemented for the V1 interface. The other one is for V2 interface. So you will play it, and uh, yeah, this uh, is the type of should be played. And uh, for the V2 program, you have additional stop uh, callback if you uh, set this to null. Then that would be two program is actually will be identical with for the new kernel or for the old kernel. Can, so both program can be loaded to, to the kernel with new interface or old interface. So yeah, you can load the V1 with the V2 kernel or V2 is V1 kernel if stop is new. Any do, question? Yeah, um, do we have some infrastructure for this already? In libbpf or um, for example that you could maybe dump the fields you need to populate or so that you see like the function signatures or you mean uh, for libbpf check signature yeah that 
Yeah, right now we don't avoid to do that. So we, it's not actually a feature, but we we realize we didn't do that right now. So we try to keep this fee, keep this uh, character uh, for long term, so people can use this uh, some kind of work around. So you can st still can use uh, the different version of API. <laughs> okay, the other new feature is uh, types uh, with suffix, uh, sense to Edward. Uh, about one month ago, he uh, landed this uh, patch. So the feature is, uh, for example, we just have a type called player. So in the user space, uh, you can append uh, some suffix, have a three underline and your suffix. For example, the player and the uh, underline, 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 and the v1 or player and the three underline v2. So that's two types uh, actually will be mapped to the same type in the kernel called player. So you can, so for the same type in the kernel, you can have two different versions or more different versions. Uh, why we need this? Uh, with this, you can have a different, for example, for different version of a uh, uh, interface, you can have a different implement or different implementation. Implementation, so you can switch between different definition or different implementation uh, on the fly. Here uh, is example: you have implement v1 and v2. So you just need, it. for example, you, when you you load the load before loading the program into the kernel, you just detect the current kernel version or feature, and the figure out it's a V1, and you load a V1, or V2, you just load a V2. Right, um, We have a question in the Zoom. Alan, do you want to speak up and? Yes. Sure. Uh, so, my, so this, it seems like this feature is decoupling the kernel module from the BPF programs. Uh, such that the kernel module and BPF program don't really need to know terribly much about each other. I was wondering if there is any sort of decoupling in the other direction, in that uh, a lot would they allow the kernel module to expose, you know, something like kfunks, but specific to that module, so that the BPF program doesn't need necessarily know, need to know which module is being attached to, but can have sort of similar callbacks into the module. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, let me repeat that then. Uh, so my understanding here is essentially this allows a kernel module to call into a BPF program at various points for the various functions it exposes. Uh, I was wondering if there is anything on available for the BPF program to call back into the module that's calling it to, for instance, gather additional data or do anything that's specific to that module. That way, because currently the control flow is purely from the model, mod, module to the BPF program. And I was wondering if there's any possibility for calls in the other direction. I think we already have that. That's kfunk, no? Yeah. Module yeah, can but the define kfunk. Sure. sure, but the problem with, well, with kfunk, the program has to know which module it's going to be calling to, which module hosts, or at least the name of the kfunk it wants to call. All right. I was thinking this would more be uh, the module could expose an interface because this this is essentially decoupling the module from the BPF program, right? But if the BPF program has to know which K function K function that module to call, then that kind of breaks the decoupling. It tightly couples that BPF program to that module. Okay, so you want well, something yeah. like struct ops defined by the module that BPF program can call into. Mm -hmm. So like generic interface where different modules will provi provide uh, implementation. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Well, I guess the short answer is no, we don't have that. So is anything like that ever so be the considered? So is the closest you can get, it, but yes, kfunk is, well, it doesn't have to be specific to the module, right? Like you can technically have two different modules defining the same kfunk, like the same name, the same uh, 
you know, like the definition of the function, right? And the program itself doesn't specify what module it loads it from. LibBPF will search for it basically across all modules. So as long as you make sure that only one module is loaded at a time, that like provides the implementation of the key func, you have effectively this. And even with this struct ops by module or whatever we call it, right, you would still have the same problem, right? Like you would have to make sure that only one implementation exists or resolve this somehow, I don't know. I think like kfunk is basically what you should use. That's fair. Okay, thank you. Just, uh, just, can, can't you get the kfunk from the BTF when you load the module? Can't you get the list of kfunks through the BTF? So, so like, rather than sort of convolute it through this, why not just get the, if you all you need to know is what kfunks are available, can't you just iterate the BTF uh, is all I'm suggesting, I think. That wasn't the question, okay. I think the question was like, can module provide some <laughs> implementation to generic interface? So like think about struct ops is being called by module or the, the VM Linux image, right? And then we, BPF provides like implementation. The question was like the other way, right? Can, can we define the interface that BPF programs can call into, but we don't know who implements and it can be implemented by module. And like, yeah, we can't. All right, in the interest of time, we need to move on. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay.